Chin Chi. Hai Pa Chin Ya. Chi Dai Chin Chi. There are three ways of saying surprised in Chinese, and I have to pick the right one. It's midnight, and I'm in front of my computer, putting Chinese subtitles on a language teaching video for young children. A little boy is holding a balloon, and when he lets it go, it goes to the top of the frame and it pops. He looks surprised. So is that pleasant surprise, chin chi, expectant surprise, or scared surprised? I pick chin chi because he smiles at the end, pleasant surprised, and move on to the next subtitle. While that loads, I open another window and check if any customer service emails have come in in the last two hours. And I also make a note that we need to add the new flashcards to the website. I am so tired, and I have at least another hour of work to do. I'm also really hoping my son does not come into our room in the middle of the night. He's three, and we just moved him into his big boy bed, and he doesn't always stay in there all night. In just four hours, both he and his brother, who are three and six, are going to be getting up. They'll come in the kitchen, and I'll make them breakfast, we'll have some time together, and then I'll pack them off to school with their dad. Then I'll go to my work. My work is something that most women only dream of. I own my own company. It's a language teaching company for young children. We're helping little kids learn a second language at the age they learn best, which is zero to six. We have Chinese and French and Spanish, and it's multimedia so kids can watch it on any screen, any size, anywhere, computers, iPhones, or iPads. I love having my own business, and it was worth giving up my job, where I had health benefits and made a lot more money. Because now, if I want to go to my children's doctor's appointments, I can go without asking anyone. And if I want to take my son to a mommy and me yoga class on a Thursday morning and instead work on a Sunday afternoon, I can do that. For a little while, I had to work two jobs to launch this. That was exhausting. But now we're about three years in, and it's starting to look like things are going OK. We're making over 500,000 in revenues. We're on lists of 1,000 companies to watch. And we're in talks about our first national distribution deal. But there's a time bomb ticking inside my company. Tick, 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 tick. That time bomb is grit. I thought grit was my superpower. I thought that's what I was going to use to take my company big. But being a hard worker doesn't turn you into a leader. Sometimes it can prevent you from being a leader. Do you know people who are working super hard but not getting to success? It's because they were raised with the idea that hard work, grit, and determination is what leads to success. But being a doer is not the same as being a leader. I, too, was raised with the idea that if I just worked twice as hard as everyone else, I would get to success. But what they forgot to tell me is that if you want to go from being a gritty doer to a successful leader, you have to change your mindset. I nearly shut down my company that year. I was so exhausted. I had dark circles under my eyes every day, and our distributor went under, taking $120,000 of our money with him. I was starting to think, maybe I'm just not cut out to be a CEO. Maybe I should sell the company and do the unthinkable, go get a real job. Right around that same time, my family was all abuzz talking about Justin. My cousin Justin, it's all I heard about, every family gathering. Justin, Justin, Justin. Justin and I are about the same age. We both grew up in New York, and we both started companies around the same time. He started his a few years before I started mine. And right at this time, when I was thinking of throwing in the towel, Justin had just sold his company for $360 million. Everyone was saying, you should call Justin. He might be able to help. And I really didn't want to call him. We hadn't talked in about 10 years, and I didn't want to call him now. But I decided I really needed the help, and maybe Justin would know what I could sell the company for. I emailed him, and he agreed graciously to come in. So it's a hot August day in New York, one of those humidity 99% days. And I'm in my office, where it's super warm, the air conditioner is barely working, 
and I'm sitting at my IKEA white table that I built with the coffee stains all over it. Justin comes in and he's wearing a crisp blue shirt, but he quickly sweats through that because of the air conditioner not working so well. I'm starting to think this is a really bad idea. Justin looks all around at our DVDs and our flashcards and our books and our plush pandas, and he has a lot of questions for me. He wants to know about our cost of goods, our margins, our distribution channels. He asks them in rapid fire, and I can't answer all of them, but I do my best. And then Justin gets very quiet. I wait to see what he has to say. When Justin finally speaks, he says, you shouldn't sell this company. You've built a really great platform here. Why don't you go raise venture capital and scale it up? Venture capital? When he said venture capital, I felt like a deer in headlights. I had met guys in venture capital and private equity and hedge fund. I didn't think that they were gonna understand my language teaching company for young children created by a mom and mainly sold to moms. Plus, I don't speak their mother tongue. Finance. I didn't go to business school. I wasn't that good at math. And I was raised by parents who were academics. After my father died when I was little, my mom became a teacher, and I watched her raise me and my brother on a teacher's salary in New York, working super hard late into the night grading papers, but still we never seemed to have enough to make all the ends meet. I didn't know anyone in finance or who I could go get advice about venture capital from. So I said to him, well, what other ideas do you have? And he was like, no, I think that's your best option. And then he left. I just put my head down on the Ikea table. I just feel so defeated. I've worked so hard to get to this place. I was the very picture of determination and hard work. Wasn't that supposed to be enough? And I love teaching parents how to be their children's first language teacher. But the idea of raising venture capital, no way. I leave the office, I lock the door. And over the next couple of weeks, Justin's words keep going round and round in my head. And finally I realize I actually love my company more than I want to stay in my comfort zone. I decide I am going to go raise venture capital and take this business big. But first, I need a big mindset shift. Mindset is a word that we hear a lot these days. It's like a buzzword. But what does it really mean? to have a powerful mindset or a resilient mindset, how do you get one? Maybe you've heard of the growth mindset, which means that the amount of ability or intelligence you're born with can be expanded upon. I started studying what mindset practices do successful people use? CEOs, leaders, politicians, Olympic athletes. And I found out that they all do pretty much the same things. Three of them are, they visualize success, they know how to quiet negative self-talk, and they can make more positive meaning out of the things that happen to them. One of the most powerful mindset practices I learned is T-BEAR. It's an acronym, T-B-E-A-R. The T stands for your thoughts. If you have a thought over and over again, it becomes a belief, that's the B. All beliefs have a positive or a negative emotion attached to them, that's the E. Then, if your belief has a very positive emotion attached to it, you'll take a lot of action. That's the A. Or if it has a negative emotion attached to it, you won't take a lot of action or even sabotage yourself. That's the other A. Then, that leads to your results, the R. So if you want to get different results, you have to go all the way back to the thoughts. Because there are only two kinds of beliefs, limiting beliefs and empowering beliefs. When I was growing up, my mother used to always say to me, Julia, whatever you do, you will succeed at. She said it to me so many times that it became a belief. It was a belief with a very positive emotion attached to it. Now, of course, it wasn't true. I failed at lots of things. But because of that belief with the positive emotion, I took lots and lots of action, the A. And the result, a few of the things I tried were a success. Can you think of anything in your life right now, some kind of a result that you wish was different? If you can think of something you've been meaning to do, like maybe write a book, or go ask for that raise, or take that trip to Argentina that you keep saying you're gonna take, but somehow you never plan it. 
Maybe suspend judgment for a minute and just think of it as a result. The quickest way to change a result is to go back to the thought that created it. You can even take a piece of paper later and just write in a column T-B-E-A-R. If you first fill in the R, the result, then you can backtrack and think about what's the thought that I had over and over again that led to a belief that had a negative emotion attached to it that led me to take very little action or even sabotage myself that has now led to this result. Quickest way to change the result? Change the thought. The thought I needed to change was that I can't raise venture capital because my parents were academics and I'm not good at talking about finances. The new thought I had is I'm the perfect person to raise money for this company. I love language teaching for young children. I'm an expert at it and I can absolutely go raise this money. That had a very positive emotion attached to it, that new belief. So I took lots and lots of action. I sat down with other CEOs who had raised venture capital and asked how they did it. I learned how to talk about my finances and I studied how to do a pitch that would get investors to write a check. The result, I raised over $2 million in venture capital. I was able to hire away people from Disney. We became the number one language teaching program for young children and got the company into the multi-millions. I stayed at the company for another few years, and then I realized my real passion was helping other people have those big mindset shifts too, especially women business owners. Less than 2% of venture capital gets invested in women-run businesses, and fewer than 3% of women entrepreneurs ever get to 1 million in revenues, which is really just getting off go in the business world. I went and got trained as a mindset coach so I could help more women go big. And I took all those practices I learned and I combined them into the go big mindset. The go big mindset is a set of beliefs that allows you to stay positive, overcome any obstacle, and reach your goals. If I could have told the 43-year-old me sitting there doing subtitles at midnight just one thing, it would have been ditch grit and focus instead on the go big mindset. Women, LGBTQ, and BIPOC, we are raised on a steady diet of grit from an early age. Just get in earlier, stay later, work twice as hard as everyone else. But grit alone is not the way to get to success. In fact, sometimes it's a ticking time bomb. Tick, 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 tick. I'm going to war on grit, and I want you to join me. The problem with grit is that it can lead to burnout, to depression, and even to suicide. If we want to truly go big, we need to stop being the doers, even if that's what we've been praised for our entire lives. To learn to be leaders, we need to get better at delegating, networking, fundraising, and managing teams. I invite you to think about what's a mindset shift that you could make that would help you to go big. Are there beliefs that you've been carrying around your whole life that aren't serving you anymore? Do you have some beliefs that are limiting beliefs that you want to replace with empowering beliefs? Just one mindset shift might get you on your go big path. And what you learn might surprise you. That's chin chi, pleasant surprised in Chinese. Thank you.